we live in a time. Many of us experience um, ourselves living in a time of, of letting go. There's a lot of truths that seem like illusions, international order, uh, the widespread trust of medical consensus and uh, our old, um, old truths that are <laughs> sort of illusions or became illusions quickly. Uh, they're very present for a lot of us um, in education, going to college and climbing the career ladder has been replaced by what? Um, looking into a crystal ball and seeing the livelihoods that will remain viable, uh, find a way to personally tend to a civilization that we worry um, might be in trouble, turbulent, even decaying. Um, you know, and, the, and the, the, back when I was in, in school, that was kind of what happened, right? It was like uh, people would come in with these futurists and tell us what careers would, would be viable in a, a few years. But I think we're in, increasingly in a time where we realize there are no crystal balls. At least I've never met anybody with one. What might be uh, more realistic to have instead is faith in our ability to make do with what's present um, in our basic ability to improvise. Uh, and there has, there's been formula available uh, for a long time with the, going to college to a college to job with a large organization that are either unavailable or just feeling deeply unsatisfactory. Uh, and so a sense of taste uh, is a way of describing how to be guided uh, in situations that are unsure and open-ended. And part of our sense in navigating life might be, to, is there enough ignorance in that? Is there enough ignorance in that perspective that's being offered? Um, so, and so in our times, it may be a little bit more akin Navigating our times might be a little bit more akin to making something that's good to eat out of what's available. So we thought that just, we don't need more introduction than that. And what might be helpful is for uh, Valerie, uh, who is a, a, uh, a trained Zen chef to lead us uh, and who teaches uh, cooking, uh, but as an approach to um, connecting with I guess, wider life uh, to lead us in a short imaginative exercise of literally uh, using your sense of taste to make something uh, good to eat. And we can see if maybe that mindset is one that we might want to inhabit uh, when making sense of, of our surroundings. So over to you, Valerie. Thank you, Liam. Yes, I, I would like to invite you actually to an imaginary cooking um, contemplation and what it could um, taste like if, when we cook without recipes, but and to really um, dive in this um, disposition of not knowing what we will um, cook actually. So I will um, please. Um, Try to be um, comfortable. Um, maybe if you need um, a glass of water, or you know, you can you can do this uh, co this contemplation either sitting or lying down. You know, please really be the most comfortable that you can. We will go for uh, ten to fifteen minutes. It won't be long, but um, please try to. Um, 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 create a space for you that you can um, appreciate it, that you can taste all of it. So I will just uh, give it um, maybe two minutes if you need to uh, um, do uh, what will you bring the most comfort for this moment. And um, I think uh, everybody is more or less here. Okay, so please um, get at ease wherever you are, you know, just feel the, uh, the cushion or the um, chair or the floor that you get supported by and really first start to um, appreciate 
your place in your room, but also in the world. Just uh, feel your center, feel at ease where you are now, take your space. Maybe you can take a um, few breath in and few breath out and just start to uh, really enjoy the space kind of uh, from the inside, expand a little bit after each breathing and just uh, start to taste what it feels like to be totally relaxed at your place in this moment. In just a few seconds to anchor yourself, to really feel yourself where you are. You close your eyes and you just be with yourself and also with all the surrounding around you. So now, imagine yourself heading to the kitchen. The kitchen can be yours or another one, but it doesn't need to be an ideal one. A basic one will be perfect. Just um, some gas, a fridge, some cupboard, and um, it will be enough. Maybe this is your kitchen and it's totally all right. It's perfect. So now in this kitchen, either it's yours or not, I mean, there is a window. So please look at this window and uh, go to open this window. And then when you open the window, take a deep breath in front of this open window and appreciate, taste all the sensations offered by the outside. Maybe the warmth of the sun caressing your face or the wind moving your air. Maybe the prickliness of the cold. Let yourself be invaded, become porous to the sounds that accompany these sensations. Now taste the sound that enters your ears. The sounds, perhaps those of the city, if you're in a city of the birds, even if you're in the city, there are birds. What does it feel to hear this sound? Can you feel nourished by the sounds? Allow yourself a few moments to become completely with all your surrounding. Maybe there is some smell also coming from this outside, which is now also your inside. Take a last big breath and now close the window. And just stay in front of your window. Maybe close your eyes and now enter your body. Travel inside your body like uh, a nonchalant fish and um, try to listen from the ears of a fish what your body uh, wants to tell you or maybe how does it feel? Is it tired or is it in great energy? Does it feel cold? Does it feel strong or weak? Try to enter in relationship with this insight. Try to enter into the deep listening of its state. And stay for a few seconds in your inner movement, punctuated by your breath. And just appreciate this fish walking around the body and listening to what it feels.
And if you can, mentally name this physical state. How do you describe it without any judgment? Now take another deep breath and listen to your heart. How is your heart today? Is it sad or is it happy? Is it anxious or calm? Take a moment to allow yourself to probe your emotional state of this particular moment. Take another deep breath now and turn to the table. There is a table in this kitchen where vegetables, fruits, salad, maybe this morning you went to the market, but also maybe you went to a regular shop. Um, it doesn't matter. This is what you have in your table. Maybe there is some fresh vegetable, maybe there's some are already a little bit rotten. Just contemplate what all these tables carry with vegetables, fruit, salad. Take a moment to look at them and look at what attracts you. Is this the, the carrot? Is this a cabbage? Just feels if there is an attraction, maybe the old image attracts you of all those vegetables, then that's all right. Just let you uh, explore this table um, with what comes in your imagination. What composition you're imagining, your imagination is proposing you today. Receive it with curiosity. then feel that you will be attracted by your specific vegetables. Um, start to touch it. Imagine feeling its veins. See how singular it is, how unique. And let yourself start to, to feel the desire maybe to bite into it, to taste it as it is, just grow, as it is offered to you, just like that. Then, now that you saw what the fresh uh, ingredients you have in your kitchen, then go to the cupboard and open it and see maybe some, see some cereals and pulses you could find there. Maybe some rice, maybe some bulgur, maybe some spelt, but also a variety of beans. Open one jar, the one that you're attracted by, and admire their color. It's usually cereals are often brown, but maybe we can appreciate the shades, the nuances in all this brown and the different shapes that each cereal and bean carries. Finally, head to your fridge and look at what you have. Are there any leftovers? Observe if the leftovers make you happy or stressed. Just integrate this new information and look at what else there is that could use for your meal. Now imagine yourself taking a pose, making a tea or a coffee and sit back for a moment to let the story of your menu unfold. You have come without recipes in mind. So you are going to let all these suggestions, those propositions from your kitchen work their way through you. To start the story, please pick one ingredient that inspires you the most. And you will start to weave what goes with it. So just Go to find this ingredient and just maybe look at it, carry it for a few seconds. 
and try to see if there is ideas that comes to you. Whether you are cooking a simple soup or a feast, maybe you don't even know that, maybe you don't know to do that. But just let yourself go and put yourself in the position to receive inspiration rather than doing what you have planned to do. Let your creativity saying what to do. Try to enter the space of trust. Trust that by leaving the open space of your memory, of the taste of your cooking previously, and what is there for you at that moment, your complete being gathered will know what to do and in what order. If sophisticated ideas of cooking do not come to your mind, do not judge yourself. The most wonderful meal can be a simple bowl of rice. So now that maybe you have a direction, take a few moments to start cooking. Maybe you take a casserole, maybe you put some water, maybe you light up the gas. Let each step of your body moving, uh, cooking this meal, try to happen naturally. Try to slow down the mind of, oh, I should do this, I should put this spice, just adjusting as you, as you move to the next, um, putting in more fire or a little salt. Let your intuition take over and invite the joy of discovery. Allow yourself the deep listening of your natural adjustment to the flavors that starts to happen. Enjoy your cooking, which comes from deep knowledge rather than following a recipe. Relax into the space of the process and just enjoy the ride. Try to imagine that it's not you cooking anymore, but it's the alchemy of you, the kitchen, the ingredient, the casserole, the hair, your emotional state, the people you will cook for if you have friends, but also maybe the bacteria that you are within yourself that, will you, you, that you will cook for if you're by yourself. Just invite all that in the kitchen as a co-creation of your cooking. And just feel the relaxation and the joy of that disposition of receiving all this intuition of what you need to do, of what you feel to do to have a meal. And I will leave you for just maybe one minute to continue cooking without this, with this disposition of mind.
And now that you have started all your preparation and that the meal is getting um, loved or is, is getting cooked, is getting in, in the liveness of this process, you can start to find a, a dish where maybe you can put your preparation and you will serve your uh, meal in this dish. Maybe you can choose uh, the dish you want, maybe a simple one, maybe a nice one. Already a, a daily one is, is completely fine, maybe the best one. Uh, we're not trying to get in another space here. We're just trying to appreciate our space as it is. And just now take a moment to contemplate your dish. And maybe observe the emotions that it suggests. They are all invited. Sometimes paradoxal emotion comes with contemplation of our food. And we'll just... Um, let them come as they are. And now we can take a few bites and feel. What is its flavor? What does it taste like? What is the deep savor of this meal? And when you feel ready, you can uh, open your eyes and um, come back together at the table of the universe that we are all seated in. Thank you for listening. And um, now I will uh, give back the, the words to Liam, which will continue to lead us. Thank you, Valerie. Um, would anybody like to share about what they, what they cooked? I made uh, leeks, leek soup with orzo. There's always orzo lying around. Uh, in my, in my kitchen. I'm feeling a bit under the weather today, so that, that was, I feel nourished imaginatively. So would anybody like to, to share anything with they, what they cooked in their experience? Hi, um, I, I loved it. It was beautiful. I really appreciate it. Thank you for guiding us through that. I, um, I ended up cooking a uh, some leftover salmon with uh, some zucchini fries. And I never really liked zucchini, but I was called to that vegetable and it was just um, a really beautiful contemplative experience. And I went to many different kitchens and windows in the journey and yeah, it was beautiful. Thank you. Great. Anybody else? Okay, well, we can, I think, move on uh, because you're in the right state of mind. Um, and really the, what's great about that exercise is using the sense of taste. That's a, something that a lot of us do that um, helps us to connect to this basic ability to imagine and 
simulate the future, to sense our way forward. Um, and so what I'd like to do now is really shift towards a discussion staying in that space of navigating the future. Um, and so I think there's gonna be two sets of people um, here or two kind of approaches. Some people might feel quite secure in their careers and they sort of know what they're doing. Some people might feel really called to a change. Um, and I think there's a lot of people in this conference who um, have the sense that, you know, there's, there's something afoot in the world, a kind of a, a need for new directions um, and want to do their part. Uh, and we all know kind of how hard that is, uh, but also um, challenging in a way because uh, you sort of need, need to use a sense of taste. And so what I'd like us to do uh, is we can split into, I think, two groups. Uh, Valerie, you can go with uh, one and I can go with the other uh, to share about the sort of ingredients uh, and the um, intuiting that goes on uh, in kind of navigating, uh, navigating creative, uh, paths through through this time. So you can you can take either the perspectives in these in these sharings of students uh, who are finding themselves in a world which is a little bit um, less harder to know uh, than than the ones that uh, the one that was prevailing up until I'd say ten years ago. Uh, or you can take your own perspective. Uh, but the important thing is to really share uh, and stay with the sense of taste about um, what is really your, your, your process and your, your use, your creative use of, of ingredients uh, for moving through these, these times and to explore really the sense of taste, this idea of that, okay, having a faith in our sense of taste uh, rather than having a plan. So before we do that, I might kind of just allow people to notice um, that we've been doing this already. Um, we've been doing this during COVID uh, people remember at the beginning of COVID, uh, there was quite a lot of um, people wanting to figure it out. Uh, having a, some type of idea like, okay, who, who kind of can tell me what direction this is going? And I'll read about, about the virus and vaccines and try to have a plan. Uh, and we've kind of moved more into a space of realizing that nobody was really right. Um, now uh, coming a little bit to our intuition, to observation, to adjusting. Um, so if we, can, if we can split into two, two groups uh, with Valerie in one and myself in another, uh, that would be... I'll create two groups and then move one of you if you might happen to be in the same, okay? Okay, Just a great. I will open them now. Okay, uh, let me move you. Okay, Vivian. No, no, no. Okay. And Valerie, you're, you're fine. Okay, open all those. Uh, Valerie, there is a message on your screen. 
asking you to join room two. Yes, it, it's at least in my screen. This is how. No, it's strange. I don't. I don't see uh, a message. I'll move you to the other room and then put you back as otherwise I don't uh, move to uh, room one, but then I'll move you back in the room too, because you were, okay. is it now? Okay. Uh, okay, Jane, would you like me to put you in one of the two rooms? Uh, you're muted. <laughs> Turned on the wrong thing there. Uh, I apologize for being late. Um, I'm not sure okay. what the breakout rooms are doing, so. I think they will just explore a future thinking now that they started, uh, well, they did a meditation process. And now they are going to explore and discuss about future uh, foresight. Excellent. Uh, yeah, I, if, if it wouldn't be disruptive, otherwise- I don't I think can... so. Okay. I don't think so. It was quite open. So I'll put you in one. Thank you. Sure. Uh, anyone else, just let me know if I can add you in one of the rooms so you can continue the conversation. Uh, Sylvia or Hitaka, if you would like me to put you in one of the rooms, just let me know. Okay, so hello, Kim. Hi. Uh, they are right now in two rooms uh, discussion, discussing about future, future thinking, future foresight, foresight um, faith and taste instead of a plan. So if you would like to join the rooms, let me know when I can put you in one of the rooms. Perfect. I'll put you right now. No, 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 no problem. I think it's fine. It's fine. It's very flexible. So right now, let me see. Do, 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 do. I'll put you with Liam. Enjoy, please.
confidence to use them. Okay, maybe, yeah, we're like um, 4.36, maybe as you were mentioning, like if there is some people we need to leave and anyway, it was an hour session. So maybe we can come close to an 